No. They, 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 they actually put it to use. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Kingdom Faith Church family. Welcome to another glory worship service. This is an amazing day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We will be exceedingly glad in it. I want you in your home where you're at this morning, make a joyful noise to our God and our King because he's worthy of all of our praise. It is worthy of all of our adoration. I want to welcome everyone joining us online this morning. You are welcome into God's presence. Let us worship him. Let us praise him. Let us exalt his name. Has he been wonderful this week? Has he been good to you this week? You have a brand new opportunity to bring all of your praises, all of your adoration, all of your worship to the Lord our God. You know, the psalmist says that I was glad when they said we should go to the house of the Lord. And this morning we are in the house of the Lord, wherever we are at. And in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So I hope you have your praise shoes on. I hope you are ready to worship our King and our Lord this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Enjoy this worship and give it your best. God is looking forward to it. May the Lord bless you. Amen. It's only one day. There is only one day with the power to say. With the power to say. There is only Say there is only one day. There is only 
let's begin to bless the name of the Lord, the name that is above every other name. We call on the name of Jesus. It shifts the atmosphere. The name of Jesus. He has no rival. He has no equal. He has no rival. He has no equal. Let's go. Until there's only you, and 
kingdom preacher. Lift up your voice this morning and tell him he's worthy, worthy, worthy. He's worthy of all of our praise, our adoration. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. I want you, wherever you are this morning, to give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, let's worship it. We still have time this morning. Our God is faithful. Our God is mighty. He is a dependable God. He is a powerful God. He is a good, good, good Father. His faithfulness to us is everlasting. His steadfast love never ceases. They are new every morning. I want to give somebody 60 more seconds to just appreciate our King this morning. Be exalted, Almighty Father. Be exalted, glorious one. Be exalted, King of glory. Be exalted, the great I am. Be exalted, our Alpha, our Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. We bless your glorious name. We praise you this morning, Jehovah. I just really feel somebody we still need to thank him this morning. Somebody still need to walk worshiping this morning, wherever you are with your family, lift up your voice in adoration, lift up your voice in praise, it's exalting, 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 he deserves it, he deserves it, I can feel the heart of our Father warming up this morning, I can feel rejoicing, excitement in the heart of our Heavenly Father, because the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his children. I can feel that our worship this morning, our, our praise is going up to him as a sweet smelling aroma, feeling his presence and feeling his temple. We worship you this morning. We worship you, almighty God. Who will not worship a great king like ours? Who will not worship a loving father like ours? Who will not worship a committed and a consistent father? Father, we bless you your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory. We declare again this morning, you are worthy to be exalted, worthy to be magnified, worthy to have all that is within us. Bless your holy name. Father, we thank you for a wonderful morning in your presence. We are confident of this one thing, that you have something great and special for each and every one of us. And we gather around your presence and around your words today. We say, be glorified. In Jesus' amazing name, we have worshipped. And somebody say amen right in your living room. I want you to give a mighty shout of praise to the Lord. Thank him that you are alive this morning and you are part of those that is blessed in his holy name. Welcome, 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 family. And for everyone joining us this morning for the very first time, we are the Kingdom Faith Church, where our vision remains restoring lost royals back to God's royal family so that they can receive their royal identity, their royal status, their royal power and authority, discover their royal assignment, and go ahead and fulfill it. On behalf of our leadership and all the family of Kingdom Future, we welcome you. We know that you are going to be blessed as you joined us today. Welcome once again, family. Please listen out to this important announcement and enjoy the rest of the service. May the Lord bless you.
Glory, 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 hallelujah. Oh God, you are so good. You are faithful. You are marvelous. You are excellent. We bless your name. Welcome, Kingdom Faith family. The Lord bless you all. Thank you all for joining this glory worship service. The prayer is that the almighty God, who is omnipresent, can be everywhere at the same time, will be with us this morning as we go through our time of worship in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Well, it's good to see all of you um, in spirit, in spirit. It's good to see you all in spirit, just knowing that we're still going to have an awesome time this morning in Jesus' name. I want to take this time to welcome those of you who may be joining us for the very first time um, online, not in the Palatia Hall. Welcome to the Kingdom Faith family. We pray that you'll be tremendously blessed as you get to be with us this morning. Amen. Now, I'm going to prepare us to give to the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord with our substance this morning. I want you to please listen very carefully as I read to you from Exodus chapter 25. Exodus chapter 25. Praise the name of the Lord. Exodus chapter 25. Um, please bear with me. I'm going to read from the very first verse. Please listen. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart, you should take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take from them, gold and silver and bronze, blue, purple, scarlet shred, fine linen and goat's hair, ram skin and dyed red, badger skins and acacia wood. Listen to this, verse 6. Oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. Onyx, stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you that is in the pattern of the sanctuary and the pattern of all its furnishing, just so you shall make it. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, just this morning, I was thinking about our service and I was thinking about the time when we get ready to worship the Lord with our substance. And the Lord just put it on my heart, said, remind my children, I am not broke. I own everything. The cattle of the thousand hills belong to me, says the spirit of the Lord. But this is very important. I am not a man on the earth. And the things that I need to accomplish, I can only accomplish it through the generosity of my children. So whenever you have the opportunity to give in the worship services, as a matter of fact, we don't even have to be in a worship service to give. If we're listening to the spirit of the Lord, there might be times when the Holy Spirit will just tell you, just give to me anyway. And he may tell you to send a seed to the church account right in the middle of the week because God has projects on the earth. He has things he wants to accomplish. Apart from his church functioning, there's some other things that our almighty king wants to accomplish in the earth. And because of those things he wants to accomplish, from time to time, he would ask his children to finance his project. And you know the primary reason why God blesses us with more than enough to meet our needs? Because he wants to make sure that we have plenty in store to be a blessing whenever he needs us to participate in his project. So brothers and sisters, this morning, I want you to go ahead and prepare an offering. This time around, I want to remind you that we still have a project for God. It's our Miracle Center project. We thank God for the opportunity to worship at the Palatial Hall, but we know we have not come to our Rehoboth yet. We still have to believe God for the resources to be able to acquire 
our permanent home, which is our miracle center. As you give today, I want you to be generous in your heart. Most of us already have the uh, church building fund account set up. Many of us also have the uh, regular tight and offering account set up on our smart devices. Now let's just use it this morning. Can I ask you to take a moment to just begin to prepare what you're going to give to the Lord? Praise the name of Jesus. While I'm asking you to do that, I'm also going to prepare my own seed using my smart device to say, Lord God Almighty, thank you. You're a faithful God. I'm going to sow my seed this morning directly into the building fund because I am believing God for this miracle to come to pass very soon. That as the Lord has led us to the Palatia Hall, we will enjoy it. We would, uh, uh, you know, have great worship services there. But not one day later, not one day later, there shall be no delay as the time ordained by heaven comes for us to move into our miracle center. Everything will be in place, including the finances to possess this property. So I'm releasing my seed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You go ahead and release your seed wherever you are. And guess what? We're even going to be able to do our confession this morning. I thank God for our very able sight and sound ministry that is helping to facilitate this online service. For those of us who want to give a tithe, get ready. The confession is about to come up on your screen. Hallelujah. Get ready for the confession. Are you ready? Let's go for it. I have removed the holy tithe from my house and given it according to your commandments. I have not transgressed nor forgotten your commandments. I have not eaten any of it or put it to an unclean use. I have obeyed the voice and the commands of the Lord my God. Now look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless me and all that is mine and make my land a land flowing with milk and honey. I confess that the windows of heaven are open over my life and God is pouring out blessing that I do not have enough room to contain. I confess that the devourer is rebuked for my sake and I am blessed and not cursed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And for every one of you that is given an offering, let's do the offering confession together. As I give my offering today, I believe God for my harvest, manifesting whatever God wants to do in my life, including fulfilling work, businesses, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions. Let's keep going. Estates and inheritances, finding money, checks in the mail, bills paid off, debts paid off, royalties received, and investment yielding profit in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to remind you, when you get involved with God's project, the Lord Almighty will bless your life back in return. If you've never saved this bank details before, please take a, a video snap a shot of it or a camera shot of it or, you know, however you are watching this live broadcast and set it up and just be willing that you'll be one of those that can say to God, God, whatever project you want to do on this earth, you talk to me, trust me. God is never going to ask you for what he has not already given you. God is not going to make a demand of you if he does not first bless you. What just matters the most for us children of God is that when he starts blessing us, you know, you know what I'm talking about, that new job, that pay rise, that new business, that bonus you are not expecting, please do not forget God. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says, and thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives thee power to make wealth. So I bless you, I bless you, I bless you today as you give to the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to give you all a few seconds. Grab your B-I-B-L-E. Grab your Bibles. Let's get ready. We are going to go 
into the word of the living God. Praise the name of the Lord. Give you a few more seconds. Grab your Bibles very quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles very quickly. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Are you ready with your Bibles? Because we're not in the same building today, we're not going to do a confession. So just grab your Bibles. Um, oh, praise the name of the Lord. It looks like our technology people are ready for us. All right. Why did you just go ahead and do this confession with me? Let's go together. Just repeat, say, this is my Bible. I believe it's the infallible, incorruptible word of the living God. I believe I am whom he says I am. And I can do what he says I can do. I open up my heart this day to receive from God's holy word. And I declare that it will profit and prosper my life. Faith comes and increases in me as a result of God's holy word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, get your Bibles ready, and you're going to open to John chapter 16. I have a word from the Lord for you today that I believe will tremendously bless you. So get ready. Let's go to John chapter 16. Praise Jesus. John chapter 16. Amen. I wish you were here with me and I could just hear you shout once again. Amen, as we would normally do when we are in the building. All right, let me read John chapter 16. Uh, please feel free if you want to read along with me, you can read along wherever you are, but if not, just listen. John chapter 16, and I start reading from the first verse. These things I have spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you, uh, listen to this, the time is coming that whoever kills you would think they offer God service. And the things they would do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Verse five, but now I go away to him who sent me and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I would send him to you. Now listen to this. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the rulers of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you through all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he would take of mine and declare it to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, brothers and sisters, I've come to realize that there are many theologians who do not know God. Many are theologians that teach the study of God. 
and yet do not have a relationship with him. In a very similar manner, I heard in recent days, the Holy Spirit say to me, there are many believers in Christ who do not have a relationship with me. The way he put it, he said, they don't know me. Ladies and gentlemen, experiential knowledge comes through intentional pursuit of a relationship. Experiential knowledge does not come by you just studying something in a book. It comes from an intentional pursuit of relationship. Now, since the beginning of this year, we received the theme from God that we're going to press in for intimacy with our King. We've talked about intimacy with the Father. We've talked about intimacy with the Son. This morning, the Lord wants me to speak to you about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So guess what the title of this message is today? It's simply titled Intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for your grace, for your anointing, for your presence. Lord, I completely depend on you for the ability to effectively teach and preach your word this morning. As your sons and daughters are joined in life from so many places all over the United Kingdom and even beyond, I pray in the name of Jesus for the anointing to be able to communicate effectively as you give everyone listening the ears to hear and the heart to obey as we respond to your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to talk about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Now, as we start this topic, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about the person of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Please listen. Some of you, this is the time you've got to whip out your pen and paper and be ready to take down some notes. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is it? Is, it, is, is the Holy Spirit wind? Is the Holy Spirit dove? Is the Holy Spirit anointing? Do you know him as a person? Let me share a few things with you very quickly, just using uh, scriptures as a foundation. Number one, we know that the Holy Spirit is a significant member of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit is a significant member of the Godhead. What do you mean by that? Right from the very beginning, the Bible starts in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 saying, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, we have reasons in looking at the scripture to extrapolate that right at the very beginning, when the earth was being created, the Holy Spirit was there as an individual not the father. He was not the father, not the son, but as an individual. As a matter of fact, when we move further to the 26th verse of Genesis chapter 1, you would hear the statement from the father. He says, let us make man. Let us. Again, the mention of the Godhead, the three in one, the trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father communicating with the Son and the Holy Spirit, these three together as one. So the first thing I want you to know is that even though the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are one, yet they have individual personality. So the Holy Spirit is a significant member of the Godhead. Number two, the Holy Spirit was involved with everything including the birthing of the son on the earth. In Matthew chapter one, if you turn to it very quickly, Matthew chapter one, I'm going to read to you from verses 18 to 20, 
to reveal to you the involvement of the Holy Spirit, even concerning the birthing of the Son. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows, verse 18. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take your to take to you maybe your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So we see clearly right at the beginning that the Holy Spirit was responsible for even the birth of our Lord and Savior. Number three, he was required for the son's ministry on the earth. This third person of the Trinity was required for the son's ministry on the earth. In that same gospel, according to Matthew, by the time you get to the third chapter, the Bible tells us of the ministry of John the Baptist and how John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Now, right in that same chapter there, the Bible lets us know in the 16th verse, it says, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water and behold, the heavens were opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You go to the fourth chapter of this epistle and the Bible tells us that then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So very clearly, Jesus could not fulfill his ministry without the help of this third person of the Trinity called the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, when you look at the accounts that is documented in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, concludes that Jesus' effectiveness in ministry and the ability to do the assignment that the Father had sent him was based on his partnership with the person of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, and God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Praise the name of the Lord. So I said to you, number one, is a significant member of the Godhead. Number two, he was required for the creation of the earth and even the birthing of the son of God on the earth. Number three, he was required for Jesus to fulfill his ministry. He was the source of insight, revelation, and power for Jesus. Number four, it's important to know that the Holy Spirit is the only member of the Godhead that is on earth with us today. The Father is in heaven. Heaven is a real place. Heaven is the abode of the Father. The Son, according to Acts chapter 1, has ascended out of the earth and is now seated on the right hand of the Father in heaven. But if you take a look again at the opening text that I read to you in John chapter 16, Jesus clearly stated that he had to leave the earth so that the Holy Spirit may come. And according to scriptures, the Holy Spirit is still available for us on the earth. Let me give you one more foundational truth about the Holy Spirit. Number five, he has been assigned to be our teacher, our guide, our comforter, our source of power in order for us to be able to do the works of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, many of you may have been completely surprised or taken aback the first time you read what was documented in John chapter 14, verse 12, when Jesus said to his disciples, the works that I do, you will do also, and greater works shall you do, 
because I go to my father. You will think with all these incredible things that we heard of that Jesus did, how on earth is any of us going to be able to do something greater? Well, one simple reason. The same Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus and empowered him to be able to do the great signs and wonders and do these works, destroying the wicked works of the devil, he is still around today. God is not expecting us to do greater works in our own power. The greater works is only possible because the Holy Spirit is still on the earth to partner with us to do the works of Christ. Now, with that foundation laid about the Holy Spirit, I want to say one very important thing that you must remember. The Holy Spirit is a person. Is a real, he has a personality. We're going to look at a few things on the scriptures in a little while, but he's a real person without a physical body. God is spirit. Jesus was in spirit form before he took up an earthly suit when he was born into this world as a baby. Now he's back in heaven. The Holy Spirit is also the spirit of God, the spirit of the Father and the Son, and he is on earth without a physical body, which gives him the ability to be omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent on the earth. The Holy Spirit can be in multiple places at the same time, even though he's a person. Why? Because he has not taken on the limitation that Jesus took on when Jesus came into the world as a human being. Jesus had to do that in order to pay the price for our salvation as a man. He had to live on the earth, be sinless as a man, and yet die on the cross as a man for the sins of man. The Holy Spirit is a person without a physical body. Please hold on to that thought. Now, let's go back to this whole concept of intimacy. Pastor Daniel, you've been talking about this intimacy. What is this intimacy? For the benefit of those of you who this is the first message you're hearing in the series of messages I've been preaching from the beginning of the year. Intimacy is simply defined as closeness between persons in a personal relationship that is built over time. You see, it is built as you intentionally connect with someone that you care about and you get to the place where two of you open up your hearts to each other that you can see into each other's heart and you are close enough to be naked and not ashamed. We had a wonderful time yesterday at the uh, married and unmarried relationship breakfast when we talked about the issue of intimacy in relationships. Well, one thing that I want you to remember is that intimacy never happens by accident. You can make acquaintance by accident. Real friendship is not even by accident because it requires a level of intimacy. And that's why that whole foolish concept uh, of love at first sight is, is hogwash. You can be attracted to somebody at first sight. You can see something that you lost after at first sight. But for true love, there has to be intimacy. And you can't have intimacy if you have not taken time to intentionally get to know somebody over a period of time. Now, with that foundation laid about intimacy, now let's look about at this issue of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to take you to John chapter 14. Please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 14. I'm going to give you a few seconds to do that. And I'm going to be reading from verses 7 to 11. John chapter 14, verses 7 to 11. Please um, take your time to open to it, and I'll read to you in a moment. Now, please listen to these words from Jesus to his disciples while Jesus was still on the earth. John chapter 14, verses 7 to 11. It says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. For now you know him and have seen him. Now, let me just stop there. What was Jesus saying? I'm here physically, 
The father is spirit form. But my physical presence should inform you of the spirit form that you do not know, okay? Or that you have not seen. Now listen to this. Verse 16, it now says, I will pray to the father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Another helper. That word another there, hello, it literally means one similar to me. One similar to me. So as Jesus is the person in physical form, he begins to tell his disciples of another that would come that is just like him. The only difference is this one does not have a physical body. Now let's see some more things that Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. He says in verse 17, he said, he is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, what is Jesus saying here? Ladies and gentlemen, as a child of God, you are supposed to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He's saying that the world may not be able to perceive the Holy Spirit because he will not take on a physical body. So we know this. The Holy Spirit is not going to take on a physical body. But you, the children of God, listen to this. The children of God should know him. Because he is with you and he will be in you. That alone already tells us that this person of the Holy Spirit is somebody that we ought to cultivate an intimate relationship with. As a matter of fact, it's only possible for the Father and the Son to be in us by the Holy Spirit. It's only possible that the Father and the Son will be in us by the Holy Spirit. So if there is one person you and I cannot afford to ignore in the Godhead, it's the Holy Spirit. He is the one who is on the earth with us. Now listen to this. The Holy Spirit is the person that you can know on a heart-to-heart -heart level. Even though you can't see him physically, remember that you as a child of God, a born again child of God, you are reborn as a spirit being. Yes, you have a soul. Yes, you live in a physical body, but you are first spirit as a born again child of God. Now, there's supposed to be a level of spirit to spirit communication that allows you to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, have a good insight from the Holy Spirit, be able to perceive his promptings, and be able to have an intimate relationship with him. He is a person. You must be willing to have an intimate relationship with him. Now, listen to this. If it's just the benefits alone that Jesus is explaining to us in John chapter 14 and John chapter 16, it should be enough motivation for you and I to pursue an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let me share with you some of those benefits, okay? If you look at that chapter 14 once again, in verse 16, Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as a helper. It refers to him as our helper. That word in the Greek is the word parakletos. That word means the one who is called to come walk alongside us. In other words, as a child of God, you are not supposed to function individually. You're not supposed to uh, uh, be doing anything aside of doing it with the assistance and the partnership of the Holy Spirit. Stay with me. In verse 17, He's referred to as the spirit of truth. Ladies and gentlemen, this simply says to you and I that we can't even be sure of truth without the Holy Spirit. Do you want to know the truth? You need to know the person of the Holy Spirit. 
Stay with me. You want to know the truth? You must know the Holy Spirit. Let me give you a little bit more. The Bible says, even though the world does not know him, you are supposed to know him because it draws on the inside of you. Verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you as offerings. I will come to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let's go to chapter 16. And let me just remind you of some of the things that we read in the beginning. Chapter 16, verse 7. It says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. Remember I said to you earlier, Jesus, while he was on earth, was not omnipresent. He couldn't be everywhere at the same time. But the Holy Spirit coming on the earth maintains that ability, that omnipresent ability. Meaning now, unlike the time of Jesus when only a few disciples would go around with him every day and, and there were the 12 guys who were intimately in relationship with him, you and I, believers today, every single one of us, no matter how many hundreds or millions of Christians are in the world, all of us can have a unique and special individual relationship with the Holy Spirit. Isn't that amazing? Let me share with you a little bit more. It talks about the Holy Spirit being the one that can convict the world of sin. So our ability to win souls to Christ, our ability to be able to convict people with the gospel is actually based on having the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to pray to people or pray to God on behalf of people before we talk to the people on behalf of God. But it's the help of the Holy Spirit that empowers us to be able to convict. I can't teach the word without the help of the Holy Spirit. I can't preach without the help of the Holy Spirit. Can I share something interesting with you? Yesterday, I was meeting with the worship team, uh, Glory and Fire, and I shared with them how as soon as I finished the message on intimacy with the Son, I knew that the next message I needed to preach was intimacy with the Spirit. And I heard the Holy Spirit just gently say to me, now, I know you're not going to try and preach that message about me if you have not spent some time to talk to me. Because, you see, this is where theologians struggle. Theologians can talk about Bible history. They can talk about the culture of the Hebrew, the culture of the Jews. They can talk about a whole bunch of stuff. But hardly would you find a theologian that teaches about the Holy Spirit because you can't teach about somebody you don't know. It won't work. Praise the name of the Lord. So some of those things I've just shared with you are just benefits of knowing the Holy Spirit. He's our guide. He's our leader. He's our comforter. When you're going through a rough time, stop going to your a uh, uh, cellar or your bar at home. By the way, Christians should not have bars in their home because guess what? If you have a bar in your house and you keep some spirits that you turn to, you know what I'm talking about, that glass of brandy, the glass of whiskey, you turn to when you're sad, when you're frustrated, when you're uh, 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 stressed, or even when you're celebrating. You are making a big mistake. As a matter of fact, that's what makes alcohol sin for a child of God. When you turn to other spirit, other than the Holy Spirit as your comforter in the time of need, you've got to really listen to me. Please hear me. Hear me well, sons and daughters of God. You don't need to be buying bottles of wine to drink, to distress yourself. If you've had a hard time at work, come back home, play some worship music, and open up your heart and talk to the Holy Spirit. He is your comforter. Now, with that said, I want to talk to you about keys to building an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Please listen carefully. Number one, you must be willing to let go of your, uh, um, how do I put it? You must be willing to let go of your personal uh, uh, things in your head about who the Holy Spirit is to really want to know him 
as a person. Please hear my heart. You're supposed to get to know him as a person. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 63. Isaiah chapter 63. Let me show you something there. I hope you're getting blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. If you're getting blessed, let's have some comments going live on YouTube. Just saying, hey, Pastor Daniel, this message is blessing me. Praise the name of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 63. I want you to see this. Isaiah chapter 63. And I'm going to read verses 10 and 11. Isaiah 63 verses 10 and 11. Listen to this. Now, Isaiah is prophesying and is really speaking to the children of Israel. You know that many of the uh, uh, prophetic but passages in Isaiah was either the children of Israel being rebuked or being comforted about the coming Messiah that will make a difference. Now, in the 10th verse, listen to this statement. It said, but they rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. But they rebelled, rebelled and grieved the Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. Verse 11. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people saying, where is he who brought them out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put his Holy Spirit within them? The Holy Spirit is a person. He is a real person with emotions. He can be grieved. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you better understand this. There are certain things we can do that pleases the Holy Spirit and causes him to come closer to you as an individual in relationship. And there are certain things you can do that can grieve the Holy Spirit. Can I give you examples? Being around people that are foul-mouthed, cursing and swearing, and that you join in also cursing and swearing. If you're using bad language, that's not an atmosphere that is attractive for the Holy Spirit. Don't watch horror movies in your living room and expect the Holy Spirit to come and inhabit that atmosphere. I can guarantee you, the Holy Spirit doesn't want to be by your side if you're watching pornography or you're watching horrible, excessive violence. There are things we can say that can grieve the Holy Spirit. Remember how Jesus taught his disciples about the sin that would not be forgiven. That whenever you attribute the work of the Holy Spirit to demons, you're committing a sin that would not be forgiven. So it's possible for us to grieve the Holy Spirit. Why? He is a person. He has emotion. He can withdraw from you. Are you with me? Stay with that. Let me give you another one. Number two. Train yourself to recognize his voice and his promptings. Train yourself to recognize the voice and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Can I give you a tip for that? Intentionally talk to him regularly. Just, just, just cultivate the habit of, um, let me just think about a mundane thing. I, I want to go to the office. I'm running out of time. I need to get to the office on time. And then I intentionally say, Holy Spirit, please help me. Holy Spirit, just guide me. Help me that I just make the right decision and I go the right way. Um, Holy Spirit, uh, please guide me. Am I, am I doing this wrong? Um, I need to do a meeting this afternoon. Holy Spirit, please guide me so that I say the right thing. For somebody like myself as a minister, it will be reckless of me to do stuff without asking the Holy Spirit first. It will be reckless to try to preach or teach or minister to anyone without speaking to the Holy Spirit first. So I have to learn to cultivate the habit of intentionally talking to him. I've got to learn to assume that he's there with me. He's right there next to me. Like the analogy that Bill Johnson would give of the Holy Spirit, you know, the Bible tells us it descends like a dove. He said, just imagine that the dove is on your shoulder and everywhere you go, whatever you do, that dove is right there on your shoulder. That acknowledgement, that awareness that there's somebody with you that you can continuously talk with. 
So I'm giving you some tips on building intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I said, number one, you must be willing to know him as a person. He's not a thing. He's not wind. He's not a dove. He's not fire. He's not just the anointing. He is a person, but a person without a physical body. And I said, number two, train yourself to recognize his voice. In the natural, for those of us who have friends, that you can recognize the voice of your friend as soon as they come up on the phone. How is it that you're able to do that? Because you've spent a lot of time talking to that friend. In conversing with the friend regularly, you've gotten used to the voice of the friend. Now turn to Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verses 2 to 4. Acts 13, and I'm going to read verses 2 to 4. I want you to listen to an important event that happened in the church in Antioch. And all this being possible because some people had learned to know his voice. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to turn to Acts chapter 13. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, let me read from the first verse. The Bible says, now in the church that was in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was also called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaim, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrarch, and Saul. Now listen to the second verse, Acts chapter 13, verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. So being led or being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia and from there they sailed to Cyprus. Ladies and gentlemen, can you see what happens when believers have cultivated the ability to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Bible lets us know that for this church in Antioch, these guys had grown. There were those among them who had become prophets. Who is a prophet? A prophet is one who hears the voice of God clearly by his spirit and can become a mouthpiece for God. They were teachers. You can't be a, a teacher of God's word if you don't know the voice of the Holy Spirit. I don't think I've ever been able to come up with a sermon. I, I think by now I've preached thousands of sermons in my lifetime as a minister. I've been, I've been speaking for about 20 years now. And so I, I can tell you it's been definitely more than hundreds of sermons by now. It will be in the thousands. Not one of those sermons was possible without the help of the Holy Spirit. But now listen to this. The birth of one of the most powerful ministries in history, the ministry of Paul the Apostle, a ministry that went beyond Jerusalem to other nations, as a matter of fact, other continents, birthing churches and raising Christians all over the world was started because some believers in the church knew how to recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, something else I want you to take notice of in that text. The Bible said these were believers that fasted a lot, and they were believers that prayed. Praying and fasting would bring your flesh down as, and sensitize your spirit, man, at the same time. You want to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit more, I encourage you, put the flesh down through fasting and then pray by intentionally talking to him. Number three, number three point I'm going to give you in helping to build intimacy with the Holy Spirit is learn to obey his instructions and lead it. If you want to know his voice, intentionally talk to him. If you don't want to run the risk of losing his voice, obey him. If you cultivate the habit of disobeying the Holy Spirit, it's just a matter of time you will stop hearing that voice. Not because God has stopped speaking by his spirit, 
but because your disobedience is a way of training yourself to ignore his voice. Turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 16. Let me show you something there that would bless you. Acts chapter 16, verse 6. Please listen to this. The Bible says, when they had gone through three years, now we're talking about Paul now, Paul, the apostle, and his apostolic company. When they had gone through three years and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Now think about that. Paul's ministry was completely dependent on the leading of the Holy Spirit. Not only did he allow the Holy Spirit to order his steps, he also was very diligent in listening to the Holy Spirit for the Holy Spirit to also order his steps. So Paul could have gone to Asia to do ministry. But the Father, who knows all times and seasons, by his Spirit stops Paul and tells Paul, no, you're forbidden to go to Asia as of this time and stopped him from going there. Thank God that Paul knew the voice of the Holy Spirit and had cultivated the level of obedience to that voice, such that when the Holy Spirit said, do not go to Asia, he obeyed. How many of you know that it's possible that Paul could have died in Asia if he had disobeyed the Holy Spirit? Brothers and sisters, many of us suffer a lot of harm. We suffer a lot of pain, a lot of disappointment. I'm telling you, disappointments in career, financial disappointment, disappointments in relationships. Many people thought they were hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, but they were hearing a different voice. Maybe their soul, maybe their loss, maybe the part of them that just wanted to accomplish something when they went into a marriage relationship. Because the Holy Spirit never leads us to pain and destruction. If it's the Holy Spirit, it will only lead you to the plan and the purpose of God. So very important, number three, please make sure you learn how to cultivate hearing the voice of of the Holy Spirit, praise the name of the Lord, and how to in obey that voice. Number four, learn to attract his presence through kingdom protocols. Now, this one is really big because I, I believe for us, the kingdom faith family, one of the things that the Lord began to speak to me about as soon as we moved into Palacio Hall is that we need to learn the protocol for his presence. We've got to learn how to cultivate his presence, how to be able to provoke the move of the Holy Spirit, that he utters in words. He moves with miracles and signs and wonders in our gathering. Ladies and gentlemen, just as it is that there are certain things that you can do that can grieve the Holy Spirit and make the Holy Spirit depart from you, there are certain things that you must learn to do if you want the Holy Spirit to be with you. By the way, just dropped in my spirit. Did any of you remember when David prayed in the Psalms and David cried out, do not take the Holy Spirit from me? I will show you in a little while. Just, just, just hold on to that thought. But in order to cultivate the presence of the Holy Spirit, there are certain kingdom protocols like worship of the Father. When we worship the Father, it pleases the Son and it pleases his spirit. Did you notice that Jesus said concerning the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit was not going to speak of himself, but he was only going to speak of the Father? In other words, the Holy Spirit is so dedicated to his ministry on behalf of the Godhead that he's not interested in doing anything of his own, but only what the Father wants him to do. In verse 14, the Bible said, he will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So guess what? When we worship the Father and we worship the Son, it pleases the Holy Spirit. When we sing those praises, our God is an awesome God. As a matter of fact, it's okay also to sing songs to acknowledge the Holy Spirit and welcome him. One of my, my favorite call to worship songs is 
Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel this atmosphere. It's a song that usher in his presence. It's a song that says, we acknowledge you. Come. Kingdom protocol includes honoring the presence of God by his spirit. Remember, the father is, he is in heaven, seated on his throne. The son of God, scripture tells us, he's also seated together with the father in heaven. But the spirit who is here on earth is one who can hear and can respond immediately when we begin to honor his presence. Welcome, sweet Holy Spirit. When we pray prayers like that right in the beginning of a, a, a worship session, it's not because it's just a nice thing to say or do. It's because we want to intentionally acknowledge the spirit of God. How about sin avoidance? If you want to attract his presence, another protocol of heaven is sin avoidance. By the way, David, who cried out to God, he did that because he was aware of his shortcomings and he wanted to make sure he did not lose what he had come to know as the most important relationship of his life. Number five, Appreciate him regularly when you pray. Appreciate the person of the Holy Spirit regularly when you pray. I'm going to go through the five once again. Keys to building an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Number one, get to know the Holy Spirit as a person. Number two, train yourself to recognize his voice and promptings by intentionally talking to him. Every opportunity you can, just talk to him. Let people think you're crazy. Let them think, oh, you're mad. You're just, you're just talking uh, uh, to yourself. Okay, that's fine. You keep talking to the Holy Spirit as often as you can. Number three, learn to obey his instructions and lead it. If you don't want him to stop talking to you, then obey his last instruction. Number four, learn to attract his presence through kingdom protocol. And number five, appreciate him regularly when you pray. When you pray and you get a breakthrough, ah, Father, I thank you for your protection over my family. Lord, I give you praise. I bless you. I honor you. Spirit of the living God, thank you for leading me yesterday. Thank you for prompting me to make that phone call in time. You know, appreciate him. Talk to him regularly also in form of thanksgiving and appreciation. And I can guarantee you, the more you talk to him, the more you acknowledge him. The more you obey him, the more you do kingdom protocol to cultivate his presence, the more you thank him, the more intimate your relationship would be with him. Knowing the Holy Spirit is not about head knowledge. It's about heart knowledge. Like I said to you a little while ago, he literally spoke to me and he said, son, you better not preach that sermon until you have spent time to hear from me. I was actually excited when I, I felt the need to bring the guest minister. He told me to bring the guest minister last weekend. And the guest minister came and, and just declared prayers of open heaven. Literally, every sentence of his preaching or teaching was followed by a declaration of prayer over us. But I felt really good because that gave me one more week of pursuing intimacy with the one that I'm going to talk about. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm going to bring this message to the end with this. Turn to Psalm 51. I kind of started giving you a hint about this uh, declaration of King David. But now let me give it to you in full. Psalm 51, turn to it very quickly. I hope you've been blessed. You continue to put your comments right there on YouTube. I completely forgot. I was going to tell many of you guys to share, share, share as soon as we started to use your social media platform to share. You know, this is the one of opportunity that we, we get to do this service online like this. And um, I completely forgot to tell you, tell the whole world, let everybody come on and join the YouTube broadcast. Uh, anyway, Psalm 51, Psalm 51, Psalm 51. 
uh, th this is the listen to the title of the psalm. So the chief musician is Psalm of David. When Nathan the prophet went to him after he had gone in to Bathsheba. So for those of you who have Bibles that the chapters begin with a subheading, you will see very clearly this particular Psalm 51 was a Psalm of David after he had been convicted of his sin, after he had been convicted of going to go get another man's wife pregnant. Now look at the 11th, the 10th and the 11th verse. Listen to this. 10th verse. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Verse 11. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Ladies and gentlemen, if there was one person who knew the person of the Holy Spirit from a young tender age, it was David. David did not know the Holy Spirit on the platform of ministry. David got to know the Holy Spirit as a young teenager while he walked the flocks of his father, while he learned to play the harp and sing songs to Jehovah God. I believe he somehow had begun to please the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit always had access on the earth. It's just that until Jesus died and shed the blood, he could not come and indwell man because sinful man could not be indwelled. The Holy Spirit could come upon man and empower man to achieve something for a moment. Men like Samson, men like Gideon, but to indwell a man, he couldn't do that until the blood was shed for the salvation of mankind. But even in the time of David, the Holy Spirit was already in communication with man. David had known the power of the Holy Spirit as a shepherd. He had enough confidence in the Holy Spirit that when a lion came to take one of the lambs he was watching, he felt the leading of the Holy Spirit to go after that lion and he fought a lion and killed a lion. When a bear came, this young boy as a teenager had already developed enough confidence in the ministry of the Holy Spirit in his life that he went after the bear and he slew the bear. And of course, when Goliath stood before him, David, as a young teenage boy, had already developed enough confidence in this relationship with the person of the Holy Spirit that he went after Goliath and took Goliath down. David had such a relationship with the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit poured his anointing on David when David did whatever he was asked to do. When he was asked to play the harp and to sing before the king, the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be so strong that the Bible said the demons that were troubling the king, demons that were provoking him, they would leave him in the atmosphere where David is playing the harp. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not just the skillful playing of this string instrument. It wasn't because David had some incredible vocal ability. It was because of the heart of a young boy that was in intimate fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit. That is why there was such power that was available. So now you can understand David had messed up. David on this occasion had not listened to the Holy Spirit. I'm sure when he stood on that balcony and the enemy came and said, go and go sleep with Bathsheba, the Holy Spirit could have said, no, David, don't do that. He had cultivated an ability to disobey the Holy Spirit. I wonder whether David was even right to have been at home in the time of war, because that chapter that talks about the story of Bathsheba started by saying, in the time when kings went to war, David stayed back home and sent his generals. So I don't know what level of disobedience David had been cultivating to the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit. But when Nathan confronted him of his sin, his response documented in Psalm 51, David cries out to God 
Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. The King James Version of it is sung in a popular song. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. A powerful prayer that every one of us children of God should pray. And in a moment, I'm give, going to give you an opportunity to pray that prayer. But I want you to listen to this carefully. The one person that every child of God cannot afford to ignore or live without is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you are vulnerable to believe the lies of the enemy because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Without the Holy Spirit, you're vulnerable to deception, to ignorance, to lack of guidance, running your life with trial and error mindset. Mini, mini, mani, mo. I'll try this today, I'll try that tomorrow. Many sons and daughters of God are doing jobs without the leading of the Holy Spirit, pursuing career without the leading of the Holy Spirit, going into relationships with people of the opposite sex without the leading of the Holy Spirit, even having friends without the leading of the Holy Spirit, quitting their ministry assignment without the leading of the Holy Spirit, taking on ministry assignment that God never called them to without the leading of the Holy Spirit. So many dangerous things we are doing without the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's so dangerous to not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit also because he is the one who convicts of sin. Just like David, brothers and sisters under the sound of my voice, have you started drifting into unrepentant sin because you ignored the person of the Holy Spirit? Because I can assure you, as long as you are being convicted when you do something wrong, you called somebody a bad name, you backbited or you gossiped, you did something you're not supposed to do, took something that was not yours. If you feel that conviction that says that was a sin, stop that. Then you're in good shape. It means the Holy Spirit is still communicating with you. But if you find yourself that you get to the place where you can do something wrong over and over and over again and not even feel guilty, you are in trouble. You need to cry out to the Lord. And you need to cry out, cast not your Holy Spirit from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. Eyesight, insight, and foresight is so important in these last days. But I dare to say to you, my brothers and sisters, without the person of the Holy Spirit, you'll be blind to what's going on. You will have lack of understanding to the issues of your life. And definitely, there will be no foresight for what God has in store for your future. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Brothers and sisters, I want you to just take a moment wherever you are to begin to call upon the Holy Spirit. If this message I've shared with you today has convicted you in any way, shape, or form, I want you to begin to tell him, Spirit of the living God, I repent. I repent that I have been very casual with you. I repent that I've not paid attention to you. I repent that I've not gone out of my way to cultivate a relationship with you. Can you begin to just talk to this person of the Holy Spirit? Begin to make new commitments with your word. Holy Spirit, I'm going to pursue after you. Holy Spirit, I'm going to study the word that I may know more about you. Holy Spirit, I'm going to train myself to begin to hear your voice and your leading. Holy Spirit, I need you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Ask him, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need you, sweet Spirit of the living God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as you are praying right now, wherever you are, I want to put out an invitation to those of you who have joined this broadcast and you do not yet know Jesus Christ of Nazareth as the Lord and Savior of your life. Or peradventure, 
You had prayed the prayer of salvation. But like David, you had drifted away. You trained yourself to disobey the Holy Spirit to the point where your conscience became seared and you found yourself in unrepentant sin. Well, today is the day of salvation. The good news is that the blood of Jesus that was shed is still speaking. That blood is still available to save your soul. So can I invite you right now to pray a very simple prayer? Just before I knew that I hear in my spirit also, many of you who are Christians, but like David, it's been a secret sin going on in your life. You continue to do this stuff and it just dawned on you as I spoke today that, wow, Pastor Daniel, I think I'm in trouble. I no longer feel guilty. Maybe I'm no longer hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. I want you to be ready to join me in a prayer of rededicating your life to the Lord. Can I ask you to also just do this? Do it from the bottom of your heart with sincerity. Repeat this prayer. Almighty God, just go ahead, repeat the same words after me. Say, Almighty God, I come before you today. I humble myself as one that does not know anything aside of you. I choose to know you, Father, as almighty. I choose to know your son, Jesus, as the one who died on the cross for me. Jesus, I acknowledge you today. I ask for forgiveness for all of my sins. I confess every sin I've ever committed. Up till this morning, I ask for forgiveness. I plead the precious blood of Jesus to redeem me now and forevermore. Now, I want you all, everyone on this live broadcast to repeat this prayer with me. Just repeat after me. Say, Holy Spirit of God, I choose to believe this day that you are the third person of the Trinity, the Spirit of the Father and of the Son. I repent that I have ignored you in time past. I ask you to forgive me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come fresh upon my life and come and indwell me afresh. Baptize me, Holy Spirit. From this day forward, lead me, guide me, teach me, be my comforter. Be my source of strength. Help me to live my life every day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. And just before I end this broadcast, let me pray for you. Everyone that's been under the sound of my voice that's been listening to this message. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you that our prayers has gone up before you as a sweet sound, as a sweet memorial unto you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you've heard us. Thank you that you're releasing your Holy Spirit once again. We repent together. Everything that we've done to grieve you, Holy Spirit, please forgive us. Come and rest on us once again. Come and rest on us, sons and daughters of God. Feel us, Holy Spirit. From this day forward, help us for a life of victory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. In a moment, we're going to be showing the announcements again. I want you to please stay tuned. We're going to show you the announcement for those of you who didn't see it at the beginning of the service. But most importantly, I just want you to know by the grace of the almighty God, we will be back in the Palatial Hall um, next week, Sunday. By God's grace, we'll be back in the Palatial Hall. Um, there's going to be some more announcements that you're going to see digitally in a moment. The announcement is going to be on your screen. Um, but most importantly, also, we're going to have our Bible study is going to be online on Wednesday. Get ready. Just keep looking out on WhatsApp and looking out for email on all the different announcements. We're going to the nation of Israel. This is going to be an incredible trip. I'm going on the trip. Uh, our pastor Ritz is going on the trip. Uh, and, and we're trusting God that we'll be able to bring one or two other ministers 
who will come along with us on this trip. We're going to go see beautiful sights in Israel. The Bible will come alive once again. It's going to be an incredible, powerful time in the presence of God. Trust God for the finances. Take that step of faith. Pay that first 250 pounds and watch to see what God will do on your behalf to make it happen for you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. I love you on behalf of myself and my wife and the Matiola family. We love you. Kingdom Faith Ministries International. Have an awesome service. Please don't go. The announcement is going to come up on the screen in a moment. Bye for now.